A ten as a symbol was now considered the sole ruling symbol, and thus received a royal titulary, inscribed like royal names in two oval cartouches. As such, a ten now celebrated its own royal jubilees, said festivals. The Aten's descriptive name was the Living One, Riharakti who rejoices on the horizon, in his name, identity which is illumination. Shu, God of the space between earth and sky and of the light that fills that space, which is from the inner light. This designation changes everything theologically in Egypt. The traditions Egyptians had adopted since the earliest times no longer applied. According to Akenton, Re and the sun gods Kepri, Harakti and Atom could no longer be accepted as the chief manifestation of the inner sun. The inner god called Aten was not so much the symbol of the sun, but rather the life-giving illumination of the inner sun. Aten by term was now established as the king of kings, needing no goddess as a companion and having no enemies who could threaten him. In effect, this worship of the Aten was not a sudden innovation on the part of one king, but the spiritual realization reached among Egyptians discovering a benign god, limitless in power, and manifest in all countries and natural phenomena. After the Aten ascended to the top of the pantheon, most of the old gods retained their positions at first, though that would soon change as well. Gods of the dead such as Osiris and Soker were several of the first to vanish from the Egyptian religious front. In year six of his reign, Amenhotep IV became weary of Thebes and the old powerful Amun priesthood, and thus founded a new capital city in the desert valley area we now call El Amarna, ancient Akinten, somewhat north of the old capital in Middle Egypt. Amenhotep IV mentions on two stelae that the priests were saying more evil things about him than they did about his father and grandfather. So from this we learn that there must have been a conflict that dated back at least to the reign of Tuthmosis IV. Luckily for the king, however, the priesthood was apparently not strong enough to curb a pharaoh's inclinations at this point in time. There, in his new capital of Akinten, Horizon of Aten, the Aten could be worshipped without any consideration of other deities. Seek ye first the kingdom, then all will be added unto you. Thus he built both a great Aten temple in the city, as well as a smaller royal temple that could have likely also been his mortuary temple. Both were unique, having a novel architectural plan emphasizing open access to the sun rather than the traditional darkness of Egyptian shrines. Outside of Akenton, there appears to have also been temples dedicated to Aten at Memphis, at Sesebi in Nubia, and perhaps elsewhere during at least part of Akhenaten's reign. Around the time Akenton was founded, Amenhotep IV changed his own royal titulary to reflect the Aten's reign, but perhaps more remarkably, he actually changed his own birth name from Amenhotep, which may be translated as Amun is content, to Akenten, meaning he who is beneficial to the Aten or illuminated manifestation of the Aten or today called master. Afterwards, the king proceeded to emphasize the Aten's singular nature above all other gods through excessively preferential treatment. Ultimately, he suppressed all other deities. However, it is interesting that Akenten retained in his new titulary all references to the inner sun as Godri. In his prenomen, there is Nefer Kapur, beautiful are the manifestations of Re, and Wenra, soul one of Re. George Hart, in his Dictionary of Egyptian Gods and Goddess, tells us that Aten was really the god reabsorbed under the iconography of the sun disk. The eminence of Aten is a renewal of the kingship of Re, as it had been during its apogee over a thousand years earlier under the monarchs of the fifth dynasty. But indeed, Akenton's new creed could be summed up by the formula. There is no god but Aten, and Akenton is his prophet. The hymn known as the Sun Hymn of Akhetaten offers some theological insight into this inner god. We find this hymn, which may have been composed by the king himself, in the tomb of the courtier A, who later succeeded King Tutankhamun. Scholars have noted a similarity between the hymn and biblical Psalm 104, although the distinct parallels between the two are usually interpreted simply as indications of the common literary heritage of Egypt and Israel. Inscribed in 13 long lines, the essential part of the poem is a hymn of praise for the Aten as the creator and preserver of the world. Within it, there are no allusions to traditional mythical concepts, since the names of other gods are absent. In this hymn, no longer are night and death the realm of gods such as Osiris and various other deities, as in traditional Egyptian religion, but are rather briefly dealt with as the absence of a ten. The hymn abounds with descriptions of nature and with the position of the king in the new religion. Irregardless of the existence of a priesthood devoted to the Aten, only to Akenten had the god revealed itself, and only the king could know the demands and commandments of the Aten, the inner light. 
a god who remained distant and incomprehensible to the general populace. In fact, the priesthood may not have served so much the Aten as they did a Kenton. However, while the hymn seems to provide exclusive rights to the Aten only to the king, his family appears to have been included within this inner circle. The new myths of the path were filled with the ruler's family history, and it is not surprising that the faithful of the Amarna period prayed in front of private stelae that depicted the royal holy family. Yet the Aten was not a god of the people during the reign of Akenton. Far from it, in fact, considering that Egyptian religion had become more democratized around the god Osiris, the Aten path had to be open to the Egyptian people, and outside of Akenton and the official state religion, the Aten never replaced all the traditional Egyptian gods because the people would not let go. In effect, among the common Egyptians, if anything, the situation created a religious vacuum. And while it is clear that the initiated of Akenton certainly paid respect to the Aten, there is no real evidence for personal individual worship of the god on the part of the ordinary Egyptians whose only access to the god was through the medium of the king. On the contrary, at even the workers' village in eastern Amarna, there has been unearthed numerous amulets of traditional gods, as well as some small private chapels probably dedicated to ancestor worship, but showing no traces of the official path. Around the ninth year of Akenton's reign, the name of the god Aten was once more changed. Now all mention of Horakti and Shu disappeared. Horakti was replaced by the phrase ruler of the horizon. No longer was the hawk form of the god acceptable, and this image was definitively replaced with new iconography. Now the Aten was known as the Living One's Son, ruler of the horizon who rejoices on the horizon in his name, which is inner sunlight which comes from the Aten. Akenton's path manifest itself with two central themes surrounding light and the king. It was probably after the inner god's final name recognition that Akenten ordered the closure of the temples dedicated to all other gods in Egypt. Not only were these temples closed, but in order to extinguish the memory of these gods as much as possible, a veritable persecution took place. Literal armies of stonemasons were sent out all over the land and even into Nubia, above all else, to hack away the image and name of the god Amun. However, even the plural form of the word god was avoided, and so other gods were removed as well. Yet by this time, the Amarna period had already reached the beginning of its end. Soon after the death of Akenten, his capital was dismantled. The Aten, as a symbol of the inner god, was removed from the Egyptian pantheon, and Akenten, as well as his family and path, were now the focus of prosecution. Their monuments were destroyed, together with related inscriptions and images, while the Aten did continue to be worshipped for some period after Akenton's death, the god soon fell out of the hearts of man. This is where the worship of a man as the son, son of God came into the scene. Before this time, tribes recognized spiritual masters or prophets who had superior knowledge of God and things to come as prophecy. The Hidian priesthood had been forgotten as it was wiped off the minds of those in prior times and man fell into man worship. The masters, like the personification known as Jesus, never claimed to be the God and the only way to God. But his personification would be used to create sun worship, the outer sun's sun, not the inner light. The temples of old would be rebranded churches and their healing potentials diminished. The world would now follow the image of a man as their Lord and Savior and leave all their sins upon this image. This created the world you have today, where people do as they please with no sense of the higher realities or awareness available to them as they have been taught to be guided by man via an image of a man. So they lay all their trust in men of power and or authority for the governance of their life. Now man tell them what is truth and what is falsehood, what is right and what is wrong. Soon, he will attempt to rid the world of any words of the Creator in favor of his thoughts and desires. And if the sleeping children do not wake up to what is taking place, they will find that they and their children's children have no power at all under the state for the negative power has already taken over the world, as the positive, not knowing they are powerful, sit back, complain, dismiss, turn their head to all that is going on. Though you cannot change the negative timeline as it is just that, a negative timeline, you can change where your soul portion resides in relation to higher spiritual timelines, but this requires action on your part to effect a change in the environment around you, so you must be active. A closed mouth doesn't get feed, and a closed mind doesn't get enlightened. If you want change, you must first be the change you want to see. I believe in you because I believe in me. And I know if I can believe in me, you can believe in you. Believe that, a high lamb.